Hello. Please know this is not a review. This is a recap. Let's go. Today we're discussing Magenta Cole. This show was released on Netflix, I think, on the 25th of October or 27th, thereabout. Magenta Coal is a South African series about the Nkosi clan and the company that they own called, you guessed it, Magenta Coal. It stars our own Nigerian superstar, Richard Enimofe Damijo. This Nkosi clan has as its current chief and also the CEO of this uh, Magenta Coal, Zebidi Nkosi. He's Zebidi, but everyone calls him Zeb. He's married to Matilda. They have three children, Sandile, Kumbalani, and Fezika. He has a son called Mangaliso by his first wife who we understand died it would appear mysteriously but we'll find that out now guys let me say this please no spoilers no spoilers if you've watched this up to the end just let us watch it at our pace okay and let me recap at my pace that i'm watching this show so please in the comments keep it clean keep it classy all right let's go episode one opens with muzi that's rmd's character who asks zeb they're driving together somewhere to some dump site and he's asking his friend zeb with why he's sinking money into this dump zeb explains to him that the person who owns it he tried to get into partnership with him years ago and the guy told him he was never going to amount to anything and muzi is like oh so this is just payback but zeb is like oh no not just that we can also use this dump as the site for their magnesium smelter project we get into our first proper scene with mangaliso the first son who is an usher raymond wannabe <laughs> he comes in singing you guessed it an usher song if you're touched by the words this song then maybe anyway he comes in and who does he see stepmother dearest matilda zeb's wife who has a wild hair all the time to match her wild soul okay and she's saying to mangaliso oh hey come let's go have a cup of coffee let's reset mangaliso says hey we don't like each other like that cut to zeb and muzi they've gotten to this site and the guy who owns it donald and he basically said to donald hey this dump is mine now by writ of court they hand him a piece of paper and he's like over my dead body so these two grown men decide let's do it as we did when we were boys and fight to the win they agree if zeb wins he takes the land if donald wins he keeps his land cut back to matilda and mangaliso having this coffee date is going as well as you would expect they start out pretty politely but it's not even two seconds they start trading accusations matilda is like you're a piece of shit and he's like yeah you never cared about me after my mom died i thought i was going to get a second mom but nope you only care about image cut back to zeb and donald this grown man they fighting but not the kind of fight you expect these guys are fighting spartacus style but with sticks so zeb wins and yeah donald signs over his land zeb is like any last words and donald is ominous like this is not the end it's not over then we come back to the next scene where we meet the second son kumbalani who is sort of uh an adequately gold mr easy crossover clone something and he's always in a white robe and this guy all he does with his life is gambling when we meet him he's with the housekeeper of the house her name's ethel and this girl perpetually looks like she works in the makeup section of sephora when she comes in he has just won big with his gambling he's just won 300k and so he tells her you are my lucky charm you're going to stick with me forever you're not going anywhere I matilda barges in and of course he looks suspicious the way they are and she tells ethel scram and she's like i need you and he's like hey i just made over 300k and she's like look if you don't help me with what i need you to do you're gonna lose actually much more and what does she want him to do apparently he's some computer we and she wants him to steal a business plan from mangaliso's laptop he's like nope not gonna do that and she's like so what is your what's the point of you having all this computer knowledge and i'm like girl i can think of at least a hundred different reasons she makes a deal with him if you help me you can keep your plaything slash lucky charms you know because this is 1823 and humans are still chattel anyway they make a deal and then here comes zeb walking along uh, along the corridor flanked by his bodyguards mofe duncan bolanle uh, nino lowa and the band and uh <laughs> this guy looks like he's off to buy twitter from elon musk but nope he's only here to argue with his wife about which son gets the magnesium smelter she makes a case for why it should be sandile her first son who gets it but zeb is like look i know you don't like mangaliso but you could at least try to pretend that we are family and listen it might actually uh, be good for you to be nice to him because what if he wins the bid well she gets the last word in by saying how long do you take he'll be before he bankrupt magenta 
Magenta Co. Next, because it's Matilda's National Day of barging into people doing inappropriate things, Matilda barges into the office of, we, you guessed it, Sandile. Now we meet him. He looks like a younger version of Jimmy Odukoya, who woke up uh, that morning and might have said, Hey Siri, how do I match my suit to the office wallpaper? Sandile is very busy right now, very busy romancing somebody. And we quickly find out who this somebody is. And she is Dima Katso. And what do you know? She's Muzi's wife. People, these South Africans are bold. They brought our RMD to South Africa to make him a cock hold. Anyway, this Dimakatso, uh, Muzi's wife, she looks very much like Nigerian actress Debbie Phillips. Matilda is like, bitch, what are you doing here? And Dima is like, hey, I only brought Sandile lunch. Because why? But okay. Matilda tells her, you scram. Then she turns to her son. She looks disappointed the way Rebecca must have looked at Jacob like, you're worthless, but I'm gonna still steal Issa's bet right for you. So she tells him, listen, you shouldn't be doing all these shenanigans you should be working on the bead your brother is going da, 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 da. and it turns out that sandile is really not interested in heading this magenta coal project because she tells him that you know whoever wins this bead is some is the person who is eventually going to become ceo eventually and he's like look i'm just an accountant everyone knows that mangaliso is better suited to this role and she doesn't listen Oh, shut up if you don't do this i'm going to expose that you've been plucking Moses cherry <laughs> and sandile is like hey i'm not plucking any cherries she came on to me Whew. anyway in the next scene Muzi meets his wife as she's sneaking home and she's like hey baby i brought you lunch and i'm like girl are you uber eats you're just delivering lunch in all the offices in this place he's like okay and where's the lunch and she's like i am the lunch which would be hot but not he says he, he has to pass sorry he's off to an emergency meeting she wants to know what the meeting is about she's disappointed that he himself does not know what the meeting is about and she's like well so he didn't trust you to tell you why he's calling a meeting and so on and so on they argue back and forth about that and she tells him don't trust this in courses because they only care about themselves and you will be the first person that they sacrifice and he tells her hey don't think that your husband is just sitting around here watching from the sidelines i know what i'm doing let me just say that so far so good i think we've met all the major characters they've done a pretty good job of establishing character motives motivations and even backstories of characters but this is not a review they sit in this meeting that this emergency meeting zem announces about the mines that they've just acquired and what they're going to use it for they're going to use it as the mines for their magnesium smelter project and then he tells the two boys that one of them is going to run it honestly at this point going by looks alone i would go with sandile because mr osha raymond mangaliso this guy is nursing a hangover this guy does not look like ceo material sandile is in his blue wallpaper matching suit but he looks calm and measured and ceo-ish it's just that we know his mother is a demon and she's the one con that has her his remote control in hand zeb announces that these two boys will present their bids for the uh, leadership of this project tomorrow sandile is like tomorrow you know he's terrified because obviously he has not done any work and he does not know anything about this when the meeting clears out he's freaking out to mommy dearest and mommy dearest is like calm down on his way out zeb jams his brother Sibonella, Sibonello, whatever, and his wife Aurora, and they are complaining that they feel sidelined from the because they didn't receive an invitation for the meeting. And by the way, he needs to return the leadership of the company as well as the chieftaincy of the clan to the rightful heir, who I assume is Sibonello here. He feels like this was stolen from him. And Zeb is like, hey, I did not make the decision who won and became the head of all these things. He claims that IVs were sent to everyone and turns it on them basically to say, you guys received the ivy you chose to ignore this meeting so obviously there's hostility between these three aurora is what well she gives as, as good as she gets and she gets as good as she gives after zeb leaves them she tells sibonello to relax they've achieved what they set out to achieve by coming here we have a quick montage of different people doing different things we see a young woman that we've not been introduced yet kissing another woman and this couple is hot hot we come to uh kumbaya whatever his name is kambali so still kambali whatever kumbaya still wearing his bathrobe because this guy has got no clothes so he's stealing uh stuff from mangaliso's computer it's weird because this guy is basically taking screenshots of the computer screen he's not like well never mind the next scene is sandile he's pacing like you know an airhead because he has no idea his mom is telling him farabale don't worry all will be well because of course she's waiting for word from kumbaya and then we have mangaliso who who 
he's calm he's worked on his project he's ceo shit back to kumbaya he finds what he wants but something extra he sees a folder there that is titled who killed my mother because yes if i'm creating a folder to track who killed my mother i would name the folder who killed my mother anyway he takes a screenshot and at this point i'm like guy you know you could have airdropped this thing right in the next scene muzi is in his office and his secretary i don't know her name she comes in to tattle she has a video of his wife dima and sandile in an entanglement muzi comes to zeb and is like guy look at this your son entangling with my wife what are you gonna do about this we've got to do something about this i cannot take this sitting down i cannot take this lying low i cannot take this on my back and i cannot take this on my knees there are other options anyway zeb says to him like dude you gotta chill and muzi is like what they argue who's at fault because muzi is like your son seduced my wife and zeb is like hmm from what i can see in the video it looks like your wife is coming on really strong on my son <laughs> this is a terrible conversation guys like this is terrible okay this is a shameful conversation i will never forgive south africa for making rmd do this but cool zeb pretty much takes his son's side and it's not so much taking his son's side as asking muzi to see the bigger picture tells him to trust him muzi is like no it ends with zeb giving an ultimatum saying look if you cannot farabale on this i can't have you here if you're going to go against my wishes muzi walks away but you know zeb is really like he seems to really love muzi because it's like guy i'm begging you i am begging you please we're about to sign the biggest deal this company has ever seen muzi just cannot with this you know and he's like he walks away without giving an answer anyway kumbaya slash kumbalani is gambling again he's holding on to his lucky charm hostage so she reminds him that he has work to that she has work to do but he's like with you by my side I'll make it. He didn't promise her a cut though. I never heard him say, if I make it, we make it. It's all about I make it. Guys, always insist on a contract, okay? Next scene, we meet uh, Sibonello and uh, Aurora's daughter, Aluta. She wants to go help Sandile. Sandile has asked her help with coming up with this bid for the project, for the project that the father has asked them to prepare. What's his name? Uh, Sibonello does not like this idea of uh, her associating with that family. She reminds him, hey, that's my cousin and finally he relents and says okay go help him sure she leaves we come to the next scene which is really a photo shoot Fezeka is directing she's working with a bunch of seriously untalented models so okay and then shortly after her lover comes the other girl her name's Sophie she comes and they start you know romancing each other and then here comes matilda again listen in one afternoon she's caught three people in three entanglements like like <laughs> what is wrong with what is going on with this woman anyway she's upset do you know what the press would do with this do you know what like my daughter a lesbian whatever it is i thought this stuff was cool in south africa but what do i know anyway she berates the daughter says the family name blah 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 you cannot be gay she reminds her that her father is a chief of the Nkosi clan his enemies will weaponize this what's her name is really tired F Fezeka is really tired and it's like hey mom why are you really here and the mom is like to ask for help for Sandile and I'm like wow everyone all the battle is in array for Sandile but that's all she says and then she's leaving and tosses a goodbye love you <laughs> and she's out very i've never heard a more disingenuous love you anyway she comes to sandile with the stolen project file bead because kumbaya has sent it and sandile tries to put up you know a pretense of integrity but you know she assures him that it's okay to steal because the end justifies the means reminds him that the person who wins will eventually run magenta coal and he's worried about how we see blah 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 and she She's like listen i'm going to make sure that you come before the board first and so they shake hands on this while this is going on aluta pulls up and sandile tells matilda that he's solicited aluta's help with this project she's like no and then later she's like actually that's a great idea this woman's brain never stopped working angles okay and now sandile is suspicious you know imagine having a mother that if she says something is a good idea you have to start thinking is it a good idea he's suspicious but she's like you'll see why and as she leaves once again she tosses another love you like guys i've never seen anyone use i love you like 
like the blade of olympus okay she uses this thing like a weapon anyway sandile tells aluta that he's suddenly found inspiration and he's got the proposal done and sorry but thanks you can go and you didn't need to drive all the way blah 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 but then eventually he's like you know what remembering what the mother told him he's like you know i could use another pair of eyes now kumbaya slash kumbalani he goes to some guy who looks like the house uh, butler his name is opa kumbalaya is here kumbalani He's here to ask Upa what he remembers about Mangaliso's mom, how she died. Upa tells him something about, yeah, it was 30 years ago. She was found dead in her room. The cause of death was kept quiet. Kumalani is like, isn't that suspicious though? Like, why was it kept quiet? Was it because it was a suicide or a murder by someone in this house? <laughs> I'm like, wow, the rich. That doesn't go anywhere really. Uh, and then the butler guy, after Kumbalani leaves, the butler guy, Upa, he takes out his phone and makes a very ominous phone call. You know that kind that says, i think we have a problem muzi is back home and his wife wants to be sweet but he tells her look i'm off to have a shower i look at her again like girl that's rmd are you mad kumbalani is driving uh and he's got this girl behind him who's popping champagne and acting really crazy they get stopped by the cops the girl basically stomp <laughs> stumbles out of the car really happy with her life and doing a snapchat live of their arrest y'all know that matilda is gonna be big mad yes next scene matilda is big mad she comes in dragging kumbalani along apparently she has just gone to bail him from the police station so she wants the, the keys back and also give me your bank cards and he's like nope and then he threatens her about you know their little project stealing operation if she tries to take the car and his cards credit cards and she gives him a whole speech about whatever it is family uh, enemies and so on and so on this woman is obsessed with family and enemies kumbalani realizes all of a sudden that he forgot his phone at the police station he freaks out there's things in that phone specifically a sex tape matilda immediately assumes that it's with lucky charm the idiot doesn't correct her because you know rich people never understand the stakes for poor people so he lets matilda go off thinking that the sex tape is with ethel anyway it's what seems like a new day dima kosi slash trophy wife comes to work and she wants to talk to muzi and she wants to apologize but he's like look i don't have time for this bye poor guy look that bitch is for the streets ethel comes to serve matilda tea and she gets her ass served to her like and oh you're fired <laughs> i guess if you say it with a smile it's not that bad and my stupid self is like oh look at you being a lucky charm for someone else and your own lockdown run out the next scene we come to is sophie physica's girlfriend comes to physica with photos of them that apparently somebody took of them making out and is trying to use to blackmail her she's kind of upset about it but physica is like hey this could be a good thing for us bad for my family but good for us you know donald calls muzi tells him i want my minds back and muzi is like hey why are you asking me you you should be asking the person who took your minds but donald is like look i know that you owe your career and your life in fact to your boss nkosi and if anything happens to you you lose all your protections in south africa and so muzi thinks about this and is like then we should meet and on that ominous note we come to the end of episode one so guys thanks like share if you're enjoying this please stick around make sure you subscribe so that you can see my videos in your timeline turn on your notifications whatever this looks like a pretty good pilot i see all the play starting to come i see people taking positions i see the conflict I, I i know a lot about the characters already so i would say that as far as a pilot this was fantastic but this is not a review all right love you guys tune in for episode two okay bye